Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Right, you're probably thinking, what is this before me? Okay, so I'm making some baby bunting. And the reason why I'm making this is that I'm expecting the arrival of my very first granddaughter. And I'm trying absolutely everything to um, decorate the home when she returns. It's not till a few weeks, so I have plenty of time. Um, so I have bought some that is already made which I will use, but obviously there's always something special about a handcrafted item, isn't there? So what I'm going to do is show you how to make these really super simple ones, these little um, triangles, and, uh, and I will also show you how to attach them. So if you want to make these, then you will need DK yarn, lightweight yarn. I've used DK, that's what I have majority in my, in my um, workroom. So and that's what most people have. But of course, you can use any yarn and any hook um, to make these. And you can make them larger. I only like them this size. Um, they were about... About three and a half uh, inches from top to bottom. Uh, before I begin, what do you need? Right, you will need any colours that you want to use. For the bunting i'm just going to stick with these four because that's the theme that i'm doing and uh but i have got a ball of cream here as well because you'll need an alternative color to tie them up so i've made a bunch here already and i've got one more to make of the beige and i'll show you how to make that uh, we'll do that together and then i'll also show you how to um, attach them you will uh need a three and a half millimeter crochet hook because that's you can go smaller if you want to, but bear in mind it will be small um, because you want them to be nice and sturdy. If you're also, before I start, worried that, you know, being a piece of work, that it might be a bit curling up or anything, I'm going to leave mine plain for the moment because, as you know, I like simple things and I may just give them a light press or block them uh, when I'm done. Or the other alternative you can use uh, if you want to use, you know, uh, be more creative is that you can put a little tassel at the bottom or you can just put a bead and a tassel if you know how to do that. I won't be showing you that today. I'm just going to show you the very simple way of how to make these and how to put them together. So let's begin. So I'm going to push these aside. Like I said, I've got five of each. Again, there's no length as into um, how big you want this. I'm going to trial five of each colour and then whatever length that is, then, um, you know, I think that will be more than enough for sort of hanging from one side of the uh, wall to the other or wherever you want to. It's a good, it will be a good amount of uh, length. But of course, if you want to make something for outdoors and you want it to go, you know, around an entire, I don't know, uh, entire room in one swoop should I say uh, or entire area rather than hanging shorter pieces then you can just make it as long as you need to so just keep going just make a whole bunch of them and then just keep going if you've got extra it's not it's not a big deal um, and like I said these they're the good thing about handcrafted items is that you can just pop them in the box and like I've said to my daughter this will be wonderful when her birthdays arrive a first a second a third and you can always pop them out of a little uh, you know, keepsake box and uh, decorate her room. Uh, I will also be doing a bigger one, a bigger triangle, and I'm going to be putting her initials on. But I won't show you that because her name's still a big secret at the moment. Right, push these aside. I've got the four here, and I'm going to show you how to make another beige one. So grab your three and a half millimeter crochet hook and whatever color you're doing next. In my case, it's beige. Just bring it down a little bit okay and it's really easy to do now you might think oh that looks like a straightforward corner to corner moss stitch it's not you've got to to make that point here you've got to put some additional stitches in because you know the whole point is for it to be a pointed triangle right let's begin then for, and the whole pattern is single crochet so if you don't know how to do those then you can go and practice those and also how to chain on I do have separate videos listed. I will go as slow as possible. Please do slow me down in your playback options if I'm too fast and you can put your captions on. Right, information out the way. Make your slip knot. This is how I make mine. And the first thing you want to do is chain two. 
So one and two. You want to go into that last hook there, the second chain, and into that chain, pop two single crochets. So go in, pull up a loop and pull through two. Go into the same stitch again, pull up a loop and pull through two. So you've got two single crochets here. Chain one and flip your whack. You want to do two single crochets again. So go into the first one, single crochet, and then go into the second one again. Get to try and get into both loops. Okay. And two single crochet. So it doesn't look like anything yet, but it will do. So chain two, two single crochets into the second chain, chain one, flip your work and do two single crochets again. Chain one, flip your work. Now you've got two single crochets. We're going to do an increase round and the increase rounds are always on the end. So one row is increase round and one row is just a repeat of the single crochets that are on that row. So we're now going to increase our first. So like I said, it's the edge rows, but because we've only got the two, we're going to pop two into here and two into here. So that will give us four. So go in, pull up a loop. There's one single crochet. Go back in again into the same space and this uh, space and your sing uh, second single crochet. Then go into the second single crochet and do another two single crochets. So now you have four. So that was our increase round. So after you increase, you're just going to chain one and single crochet those four. So go into the first one and work across and it will be four single crochets. So there's three and then the last one here, four. Once you've done that, chain one, now is increase row. So the increase row now will change the four to six. So it will go up in twos. So you do the first one, two single crochets, work along, that's three, four, you're left with one more, and you just pop two into there. So when you're doing the increase row, it's two into the first one and two in the end, and these are all singles. So now we have th uh, we've done the increase row, and that's six stitches. So the next one is not an increase row. So chain one, flip your work, and then just do your six single crochets. Two, three, four, five, and six. So we've repeated those. Now it's chain one, it's always chain one and flip your work, we're back to the increase. So that was six, the next one's going to be eight. So two into the first one, one and two, three, four, five, six, and then you've got one more left, you pop two into there, and that will make it eight. We've done the increase, now we just chain one, flip our work and do the eight single crochets. Remember, one row is a increase and one is just repeating the, those same amount of single crochets along. So we that one was eight single crochets, so two, four, six, eight. Okay, that's what we have so far. By doing this little extra bit here, um, that's what creates a little point at the bottom. Oops, right, so we've got eight. Now we want to do our single crochet row chain one, flip your work, very first one, two, that's one and two, then work across, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and the last one's two, which will make it ten, nine and ten. Chain one, flip your work and do your ten single crochets. Five, oops, split my arm there. Five, uh, six, seven, eight, nine, a little one on there on the end, ten. So we've done our ten single crochets. Now chain one, we're back to the increase. So this row will be twelve. So two in the first one, one and two, three. Four, five, six, 
six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and two in the last one there. Eleven and twelve. Chain one, flip your work, do your twelve single crochets. Two, three, and work along and you should have twelve. And 12 okay so once you have your 12 this is your last increase chain one and now we want to pop 14 stitches here so two in the first one one and two and work across until you get to the end and put two single crochets on the end and that will be 14 one single crochet into every stitch until you get to the end There's my last stitch into there, two single crochets. So I've got my 14 and now I'm just going to chain one, my very last row, and do two single crochets, uh, sorry, one single crochet in each one, it should be 14. and 14 and you are done like I said I'm only doing three and a half inch ones because I want to do lots of them and I don't want them to be too big because I'm actually doing it on, um, in our living space um, rather than outdoors but you know this is I think this is a good size so I stop at 14 but you can carry on if you want to make them bigger carry on until the one that you want once you get to the length that you need in my case it's 14 just chain one Get your scissors, snip a bit of a lot, uh, yarn, not too much because we're going to work that into the side just a little bit. Okay, so see what I mean if, if you feel like it's curling up, but once they're all attached, they will sit pretty straight. But you can give them a press and you can block them. Grab your needle now. If you are doing a tassel or attaching a bead of sorts or whatever it is you want to do down here then you won't need to do this bit because I'm doing the plain. All I'm going to do is, I always keep this on this side because I'm, I crochet with my right. So, um, but this, it doesn't matter which way you do this because what we're going to do is we're not going over the stitches. The best way, don't go up any of the sides because you know, you can pull the work. We want to keep, the little bit of the point's going to go, but you see that little space that you get right in the beginning, that's where you can attach your bead if you want to, or a tassel, okay? But I'm not going to do that. So I'm just going to go in, try and slide it between the work, right? You can feel it with your thumbs. You don't want it to come out that side and you don't want it to come on the top. You just want to go right through the stitches as far as you can go. I would say just more than a half here. And then pull it through, but keep your thumb on the bottom bit just because you don't want to okay pull it so yes you might be able to see that it's fine you can go back again and up again but to be honest I re you don't really need it because they're not going to be handled the way uh, baby items are example because they're going to be way up there <laughs> it's not going to pop out right so let's show you how to join these so I think I'm going to do, I won't do all of them, but I'll start off. So I think what do you think guys? I reckon the way my brain is working, I think I will put this here. So after that, yeah, that's the way to go. So we'll start with beige again on this side. Grab your needle and the colour of your choice. Now I'm going to use cream, but you can use any any one. You know, you can go darker, you can go lighter, but you know, do exactly how you please. So make your slip knot. 
Now the ends are going to be a little bit longer because we want to um, have that to tie tie the side of our bunting to a post or however you want to. So I think 30 chains are sufficient. Right, I got my 30. I think that's more than enough to make a knot and tie against something. So you can go higher if you want. Don't go any lower I, because you are not going to have enough room. So 30 is more than enough for the side edge. I don't, I want my bunting to be right till the end. I don't want like a whole chain that you can see that's visible after tying the knot and then you've got the bunting down here, you know. I think you know what I mean. So grab your first piece and you want it with this on this side because we're going to single crochet across the 14 stitches so pop your hook into the first one which is here and grab then this so that you can just work it along so pop your hook in into the first single crochet pull up a loop pull through two that's your first now you want to single crochet 14 along this really is as easy as that Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen. So you've done your thirty chains and you've attached your it looks so cute. Right, now it's up to you about the spacing. I'm going to try five first. Let me see. One, two, three, four, five. And I'm just going to place my next colour, which will be here, because I don't want it to be too wide apart. Let me try five. I think five's enough. What do you think, guys? Ten will be too wide. Mm, decisions, decisions. I'll go with 10. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, ten's better. Don't want them too close together, is so 13 in the beginning, 14 across, 10 chains. Grab your next colour, which was this one. Go into the first single crochet here. Grab your yarn end as well at the same time here. And do your single crochet. And single crochet 14 across. Am I happy with 10? I think I am. So 4, 5, 6. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen. Any of the bits that are here, you can go back, just give them a pull and snip them off at the back. You can do that as you go along, or you can do it later. So that's fifteen. So now I'm going to chain ten. Next colour. This is what I mean. See, if you worried that they are going to curl up, but I don't think they will do. But if you are worried, just block them. If you're attaching a bead or tassel, that will give them the weight to keep them down as well. If that's what you want to do, or just give them a light press, a very light steam press on the iron. Just try not to burn it. Okay, pink. Did my 10. Now I'm going to go to the first single crochet on the top row and do my first single crochet in there. Grab my yarn and work across 14 stitches. The cream looks really nice on this actually. 
I'm just doing single crochet. I think that's the best. I'm making simple bunting, like I said. This is the best technique, I think. And um, it's but if you want to be more elaborate, you can um, make up leaks and attach them. You can put hearts on there. You can do whatever you want to. Sequins, you name it, you can do it. So, chain ten again. And I'll grab my mind that knot. I'll grab my next colour, which is beige, and do my first single crochet. Take my yarn along and work my 14 single crochets. I was thinking of doing the um, granny square ones where you can alternate all the colours but I actually wanted them plain just solid colours I mean so this is how it will be can you see guys now you can decide whether you think 10's enough or 5 you can change it to 7 but I, I think because I'm using a smaller hook it's more than enough Right then, this is how I make my baby bunting, and I've got so many to do, cannot wait, excited. Hope you like this tutorial, guys. Like I said, if you have spare yarn, go ahead and make these for your children or your grandchildren. They're absolutely lovely. I can imagine them just, you know, for their decorations, having all their friends around for their birthdays. Okay, guys, thank you for all your support. Thank you for subscribing. Please do like and share this to someone who you think might like to make these. So simple to do. And it's a perfect, you know, the perfect triangle I've got here. Just the right amount of dip and point. I'm fussy about things like that. <laughs> if it was a bit stubby, I wouldn't be too happy. Right, take care, guys, and I'll see you very soon.